Do you think that Potiphar was good to Joseph? He was extremely good to him. He brought him as a slave, but he came to a point that he gave everything and said, "Listen, this is yours. Do whatever you want to do. Run it for me." So much. That means integrity means trustworthy. You can trust this person. Potiphar may have had the most beautiful woman in the land. He could trust Joseph. I'm going for two weeks. You take care of my house. He knew one thing: this guy will not touch my wife. When nobody is watching, I still have the trust. This guy will not put his eyes on my wife. Now that's what the integrity God is looking for. Stay tuned for the latest message from Pastor Kevin Anthony. Hallelujah. Last week we were talking about uh, is honoring God. No? We finished honoring God. We're talking about the hunger for God. The hunger for the, for the Lord. To have an appetite for the Lord. Appetite for His Word. Hungry and desperate for Him. We also looked at not only you feel hungry for yourself, but you trigger hunger in someone else. Looking at the dish in front of you, looking at the food that you're eating, looking at the food that you prepare, the aroma just spreads and says that person's mouth starts watering. So you not only hunger for yourself, but you become an influence for somebody else's hunger. You become a you become a vessel. You become an influence for somebody else's thirst for the Lord. Amen. I don't know what I did you choose this week or what I did you choose last week. Did you choose the right I hope you have chosen the right I. Not the I, the letter I. The alphabet I called either it's idol worship or idol worship or it's ideal worship. And I pray that you would have chosen the last one. And that doesn't end with that sermon or does not end. It's an ongoing. Look at somebody it's an ongoing. Worship is ongoing. Listen, worship is ongoing. Are you with me? Worship is not just go through one season. No, no. Worship is a lifestyle. One of the definitions, the Bible says that God is made manifest in Judah. Where the praise of God, where God's praises are sung, where God's praise is. rise up he said the bible says in that place god has made manifest that means another definition of worship could be worship is god's address if you going to take in good in judah is god made manifest that means when he says uh, 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 it says god dwells in the praises of his people That means if you put that equation together it means worship is God's address. See if you don't know where God is start worshiping because he'll show up in his address. He says where worship is God is present in that place. He said where two or three are gathered in my name there am I. That's God's address. We're going to go to look at another alphabet called integrity. I God is looking for integrity. and integrity is an integral part of any christian living or a christian man or a son of god or a servant of god any child of, it's one of the most is it is one of the most important aspects important thing that god looks for is integrity yes the bible says uh, faith pleases god yes without faith it is impossible to please god but we're going to look into the word of god that act, that that The, the the thing about integrity excites him more excites him on the same level as faith it's an amazing thing that we look at we we're going to talk about the, the integrity in a in a in a in, in a positive way at the same time integrity where we have bad examples but this week i will try to do i'll try to cover up is the examples which which stand out as an example for us a role model for us what integrity means And if someone is talking about integrity or we talk about integrity at at in in any setting the story is incomplete incomplete or the study is incomplete if you don't mention about Joseph. 
if we don't mention about joseph the story or the study on integrity because that man speaks that man screams integrity hallelujah yes he was one of the favorite child he was the favorite child kid that of jacob because he was his favorite he invited a lot of hatred from his brethren because the way he the father treated him the way the father dressed him up the father way the way father favored him and it was very evident and they were very the bible says there was jealousy at all times and then the bible says god's favor also was resting upon this boy that he had a dream and in that dream he said to his brothers you will bow down one day before me they got all the more upset then the bible says god gave another dream in that says the bible says that even the parents would bow down and he was very boastful yeah he got he started to be kind of like you know very boastful about it and the bible says that landed him into trouble long story short they wanted to kill him at one point in time but they did not they sold him the show they sold him to the ishmaelites They, he was with the Ishmaelites for a transition period, for a short period of time, and they sold him back to Potiphar. Oh, not back! Sold him forward to the next hand, Potiphar. Potiphar. The, some of the scholars believe that Potiphar was like the cup bearer to the king, and the cup bearer to the king is someone who is in great authority. Are you tracking with me, church? He was a high-ranking official. in the days of egypt in the days of pharaoh number two guy like that kind of a high ranking guy now look at this guy the bible says he brought him home as a slave he brought him as a slave a bond servant he bought him as he purchased him bought him and the bible says what within no time he hands over the entire business the entire affairs of his business in the hands of who joseph and the bible says that potiphar saw uh, saw with his own eyes how he prospered why because the lord was with joseph that anything that he touches like he had that golden touch anything they touch it turned gold anything touch everything prospered but the bible says that this man now now in in, in that culture in that culture in the bible days in those in that culture people of that high ranking there were people who would have multiple women in their life so if potiphar is a cup bearer of course he would have had access to the best or the be- most beautiful women in the land are you there so far that means he had many many uh, at his disposal because that's the way it was at that level any woman would want to be associated with that man because the kind of the kind of power the kind of authority or the kind of placing that he was a high ranking guy that tells that the wife that he had among all those beautiful women in that place there was one person who was his wife that means she was the most beautiful one come on guys wouldn't you like to take the most beautiful one to your house oh. come on guys am i talking sense i have the most beautiful one here with my house come on he may have hundreds of affairs he may have a hundred at his disposable the one that he takes home is his wife the most beautiful and the bible says the most beautiful is in the house and this most beautiful cast her eye on joseph now joseph the bible says was not only handsome on the physical as far as the physical appearance is concerned his personality was not just handsome man well built tall and high but this guy had the brains the very fact if the if 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 the guy was entrusted with business that means he had business sense that means he had intelligence he had competence that this guy was complete tall dark and handsome everything that a woman would like <laughs> hey man i like that <laughs> everything that a woman could be dream oh man this guy is handsome oh this guy is smart oh this guy this guy this guy everything was in that man and she cast her eye on him and she said i want to have an affair with you she wanted to have a relationship with this man and the bible says every time she was making her advances he kept resisting he kept resisting go to genesis 39 verse number 8 he kept she kept resi- he kept resisting he kept refusing he kept pushing her back he kept pushing her back he kept listen she had in that place in that house was the most beautiful woman in that land was in his house potiphar's wife 
verse number 9 verse number 8 see what the bible says verse number 8 39 verse number 8 genesis by the way genesis is the first book of the bible for the ones who know the bible very well the first book of the bible look at verse number 8 see what he say what does he do he said but he refused she every day she kept pushing him she kept pestering him she kept touching him she kept talking to him she kept engaging she wanted to draw attention and every kind of things that she could do she was pestering and she was going after him and the bible says what but he refused and said unto his masters why behold my master knows not what is with me in this house for he has committed all that he has into my hand verse number 9 and there is no greater in this house than i look at who is talking that slave is talking and by the way who is he talking to to the master's wife as good as the master come on am i making some sense church if the husband is not in the house who is in charge the wife the next one who is in charge he is talking to her listen do you know who i am listen that's way it is when enemy is trying to make advances against you or wants to touch you or wants to negotiate with you or wants to get you out you should know who you are Amen. that you are in a greater position not in a weaker position are you with me when the enemy is trying to nudge you when the enemy is trying to draw your attention when the enemy listen you are not going after the temptation but you cannot stop the temptation coming to you we don't run after temptation but it's not the case with temptation it runs it will still show up that's what the bible says but when temptation comes you should know who has the upper hand what did he say there is nobody greater you know he's telling talking to his wife do you know who i am i'm greater in this situation right now i have the upper hand i am greater in this house there's nobody beside me there's nobody above me here right now Look at what he says. Neither has he kept back anything from me but you except you because why you are his wife. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Question. Do you see integrity in this place? Do you see integrity? So screaming shouting in this in these two passages in these two scriptures. He's saying what? He has given me Potiphar has given me everything as a matter of fact he has no clue what is this affair is what is the state of his way. he has no clue about the books i maintain it because he trusts me by the way what do you mean by integrity i shall ask this question in the beginning of the thing we are talking about integrity integrity what do you mean by integrity in the most layman's language honesty i like that that's what the first answer came in dubai The first thing is honesty. What else is on what else is integrity? We're going to we go to we, we're going to you know shred this 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 word and see how simple it can be. What is honesty? Yes, but what he said? Truth absolutely. Integrity is someone who holds and has good moral values. somebody who holds on and believes and has good moral principles come what may i am not going to budge this is the way this is the principle that i believe this is the principle that i have this is the values of my life one of the somebody defined integrity as doing something that is right when nobody is watching that is integrity It is very very easy to hold integrity in 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 a public setting when somebody is watching but true integrity the truth is when nobody is watching when nobody is around and all i am by myself nobody to monitor me nobody to look at me nobody to am i still holding on to the values that i have now the question i want to ask you said he this verse talks about integrity right his integrity that he was holding how many people do you see that he was having his integrity towards how many people how many persons are there or how many person is here how many he was holding his integrity it's on the screen before how many people or before how many person was he holding his integrity he said you said just now do you see integrity you said yes before how many people or before how many person or persons how many people are there that he how many persons are there that you see 
that he is holding his integrity before me there are two people that is holding his integrity before two 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 see what he says the master has entrusted everything in my hand there is nobody greater than me my master does not have a clue what is in my hand what he has held back is you because you are because you are his wife you are not his mistress but you are his wedded lawful wife do you think that potiphar was good to joseph was he good to him he was extremely good to him he brought him as a slave but he came to a point that he gave everything as a listen this is yours do whatever you want to do run it for me so much that means integrity means trustworthy you can trust this person potiphar may have had the most beautiful woman in the land he could trust joseph i'm going for two weeks you take care of my house he knew one thing this guy will not touch my wife when nobody is watching i still have the trust this guy will not put his eyes on my wife now that's what the integrity god is looking for when nobody is watching listen god is actually looking for listen by the way was potiphar was potiphar this mr potty was he sorry <laughs> was he a born again spirit filled tongue speaking powerful man of god no what was he he was a heathen man idol worshiping stop praying those prayers lord in my next job my next manager is going to get who's going to come in as a transfer or whatever lord i want him to be a born again man spirit filled when he comes he has to lay hands upon me and pray every single stop making those prayers and don't be surprised when god brings somebody who's potty mr potty are you with me church god is looking for people how you handle that potty for God is looking for such people who know how it means what it means to be holding on integrity before someone who is good Listen he paid back he said my master has been good to me my master has trusted me my master knows me my master has given everything except you he said you he has been good to me and how can i sin against my master Listen you and i may not you and i you and i may not go through this kind of situation but you and i certainly face the situation in our workplace a boss has been good to us the companies that you work the organization that you work for has have they been good to you then god is looking for such people who would hold their integrity even before the owners of the company that you work god is looking for such people who have been good to you your line manager has been good to you you hold your integrity whether he is watching or she is not watching it does not matter god is looking for people that kind of worshipers who would hold their integrity doing the right thing when no one else is watching Hallelujah. So listen, most of the time in our Christian we mean to have a good conscience before God. A good clear conscience. No, no, no. Here the Bible says, I have a great I have also have a conscience that I need to present before my master, a clean conscience. Both before man and before God. The word of God is two-edged. The sword, the word of God is a two-edged sword, right? One sword says, you hold your integrity before man. the other edge says you hold your integrity before god hallelujah am i making some sense and next party says how can i do this great wickedness and sin against god look at the way he is holding his integrity before god it's not just god it's man it's not just man but he's holding his integrity also before god unshakable in jesus name hallelujah making some sense pray Let me ask another question. All the children in the house. Has your mom been good to you? Has your dad been good to you? Come on guys. Has your mom been? I want to ask all the ones here in this house. Nobody landed from heaven. Everybody was born to a mother and a father here. Nobody was birthed from the ground came up like a, from the root and came out like that. No, no. You were born to a mom and you were born to your dad. Then listen, we hold the same thing together. before them integrity before the mom and before the dad listen all the husbands in the house do you think your wife has been good to you if you say your wife has been good to you then you need to hold yourself before your wife your integrity 
it's important it's important if you know that your wife has been good to you if you know your mom has been good to you if you know your dad has been good to you at the same time if you know your husband has been good to you then you need to hold yourself before that person in integrity why simply that's what he's saying i cannot touch you i cannot because my master has been good to me how can i how can i look at you how can i get into this dirt how can i get into this field how can i even think because he has been good to me take it down even to your bosses take it down to your place that you work listen it will change the way you work you would see the favor of god in your life listen you can say god i want your hand to be upon me i want people to see the presence of god over me this is how you show the presence of god and enjoy the presence of god in your life that people can see the presence of god is over when you hold your integrity before god when you hold your integrity before people hallelujah are you with me church it is not just by mere competence it's not just by mere intelligence Oh I know the books I know the figures I know to do the budgeting I know to the expen No 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 the bible says he had integrity Are you the church Before you leave this place name those people who have been good to you in your life Remember those people listen take moment this is what church is all about take a moment stop a while stay in a while 73 times it is written in the bible sela sela I mean stop hold a minute don't go forward stay there meditate on it sela hold pause think before you leave this room who has been good to me and you're going to thank god for their lives and say god give me grace that i will stand before those ones who have been good to me and i will be holding my integrity Hallelujah. For us in our house it's by law that none of our devices have passwords. None of our devices have passwords. None of us. And even if there is a password everybody knows. Our phones can be left, our devices can be left in the drawing room, in the bedroom, anywhere. because that's how we want to hold our integrity before each other and we want to push this to our children i have a teenage son in my house he better learn that thing very well he better know that there is no password business in this house and even if it is there it is to be shared and we should know what those passwords are hallelujah listen you may not be running towards temptation but temptation is certainly running before you or running after you chasing after you. well that's the way that's a work of temptation by the way i told something that no god is not just impressed or pleased by faith you look into the word of god go to the book of job go to the book of job see if you're looking for a job god is god is there to offer you a job in the bible okay if you're looking for a real job there is the one there in the bible okay he is there there's certainly there is job for everybody in the bible yeah. listen there is job for everybody in the bible if you're looking for a job there is job for you <laughs> amen the word of god is never boring go to chapter 1 it's worth mentioning when we talking about integrity then it's worth talking about this character in the bible Go to chapter 1 verse number 6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord it's all happening in the heaven setting and the bible says and satan came also among them and the lord said unto satan from where cometh thou and satan answered the lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it that's what he is good at Verse number 8 And the Lord said unto Satan Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man who feareth God and escheweth or shuns or hates evil And then the Lord then the, the conversation goes forward not don't read for that please let's look at it. I want to paraphrase it The Bible says that the devil begins to the, the that the satan begins to converse with god and says listen do you think he's following you for no reason 
you have a covering around him just allow me to get inside the covering and see what i do and then see his reaction see his response you have big boast about this you have the uh, nobody like him just allow me and the bible says god opened the covering god opened the edge and what happened the bible says there was instant havoc he created such such destruction in his family that he destroyed all the children all the sons everything in one shot and overnight his business was burnt completely destroyed completely completely the wealth was burnt down completely destroyed he was left from that position he was brought down to nothing what was 20 then job rose tore his mantle shaved his head fell upon the ground and worship what is this man made of see business if you lose you can bring it back you can give some time and bring it back again children i want to meet that parent who rejoice who celebrate when they see the young ones die and they're still alive i have met some born again believer moms and dads 10 years back the child the son has died if i meet them today they are still grieving move on no but they are still grieving they are still stuck with the memories of oh i my son my son they they, they can't come to terms and look at this one he's not lost one son he's lost all his sons not one of them all of them all the children wiped off everything was now look at this man he fell down on the ground he didn't throw a tantrum and start accusing no 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 he worshiped god go to the next verse see what he says and then he said naked came i out of my mother's womb and naked shall i return there we heard this dialogue many times right any place anywhere any world in the world any movie star anybody this is all from the bible by the way right songs and all no this this is all biblical words see what he says and the lord and he said the lord gave and the lord has taken away blessed be the name of the lord what type of man is this in the midst of the loss in the midst of the tragedy in the midst of all these things he still says lord i bless your holy name go to the next verse and he says what well, in all this in all this confusion in all this grief in all this loss in all the heartbreaks bible says job sinned not nor charged god with folly go to what chapter 2 verse 1 he said again there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and satan came also among them to present himself before the lord and the lord said unto satan from where cometh thou and satan answered the lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it the same answer what was asked the first same response same 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 look at verse number 3 and the lord said unto satan have you considered my servant job there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man one that feareth god and shuns evil or hates evil and still he holds fast his integrity though although you moved me against him to destroy him without cause do you see some additions or do you see some difference between the first and the second response of god when he asked where are you coming from i'm coming from earth doing up and down walking here and there and god said have you seen my son uh, have you seen my uh, the servant have you seen this guy called job have you seen have you met him have you considered him have you looked at his life have you seen how this man is amazing that's the first time do you see when god repeated the same thing the second time do you see some additions or the same thing that he repeated what is the addition that god added here now he says he is still holding fast unto his integrity and again the devil asks the same thing do you think he's following you just like that allow me to touch his skin allow me to touch his flesh and see what happens and god again permitted him he says do what you want to do make sure he does not die don't take his life and from 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 the crown to the sole he was filled with sores he was filled with blisters all over the place he was so the severe so so much so he, he took one a sharp thing and started scraping himself because he could not 
and often time one pimple comes up here and we are like what is happening here and we want to do all kinds of and we start no 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 the bible says from here till the sole of his foot he was he that means he could not stand he could not sit he could not sleep he could not walk he could everywhere if he had to put something in his mouth there also his guy every place yet the bible says this guy now by the way where was uh, where was job's location by the way can you remind me where was job's location geographically where was job on the earth <laughs> was job on the earth yes. and where was satan coming from from mars no he was not coming from mars he was coming from earth where are you coming from where are you doing now i'm coming from earth on what are you doing on earth i was doing up and down now look at the way god responded to him back you coming from earth oh good that means you would have taken notice of this guy called job now hold a minute to explain this you need to understand something here If you have a teenage daughter or a teenage son in your house and he or she comes first in the university exams in the city or in the state what would you do You would in today's world you would call all possible media in your house they will land up even if you don't come they'll come in your house with all the camera 24/7 they'll come You will be talking about it and boasting about it all over the place hey, did you know this my son forget the forget of it graduation is too far if a baby is born in your house and the baby is in the ninth month or the 10th month and takes the first step what do you do ah my baby was there took the first step <laughs> no 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 you want to boast about it you want to talk about it listen you th- behave as if your child was the only child began to walk you began to talk about it you began you began to describe as if you're the only one unique your child is only one unique you want to say even if somebody is not interested you still want to talk about it come on guys am i making some sense that's exactly what god was telling him you coming from earth fine god was playing a perfect father god was playing top behaving like a perfect father before satan says did you see my son did you see the champion in that place honestly speaking how many of the parents in the house like to boast about your children honestly speaking oh yes unashamed i have no apology i will not I, I, without any apology every parent every parent your child does well in school your child does well in sports your child does something unique you want to talk about it That's exactly God was telling. Did you consider you went to earth right? You didn't come from Mars. You didn't come from any other place. You came from earth. Then you must have definitely seen Job. Look at the way God was boasting. And what was he boasting about in the second time? Oh, fine. He's a great man on the earth. He's a man of this, he's a man of that. But next time he added, he's still holding on to it his integrity. Listen. That's what God is looking for such people. He's looking for such occasion that as a father he wants to boast about you. Listen, pray God, I want to worship you such a way that you take notice and you boast about me before the devil. I take pleasure about boasting my son. I take boast pleasure in boasting about my daughter. Did you consider my son? Did you This by the way, he did not say did you consider that man? No, no, he said did you consider that man Job? He did not push in any man. No, he pushed a name. And I think you guys you guys got a name. Amen. Anybody is nameless here, we'll name you today. Amen. We'll do your christening right away. No, you have a name. Then how about having the same thing here that God is boasting about you. Good verse number 9. Good verse number 9. When the Bible says when he went through all the sores, when he went through the difficult time, that he could not bear look at what happened in verse 7 then his wife said unto him do you still retain your integrity look at what he says are you still holding on what's wrong with you man are you okay in your head are you still are you in your right mind are you sane are you still holding on to your integrity curse god and die but he said unto her 
You speak as one of the foolish women speak. What? Look at the question. What? What's wrong with you? What do you say? What shall we? He said, what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Many a times, we, if, we, if we are honest with ourselves, many a times we see we lose integrity is through our mouth. Because of confession. Because the things begin to seem against us. And we are going against and it's, it's, it's too much. It's unbearable. That's where the Bible says what? He did not sin with his lips. He did not sin with the words that came out of it. Listen, hold on to your integrity. No matter what situation you go through. No matter how difficult. Listen, none of us have this difficult situation like Job, right? Has anybody lost his child? Has anybody lost his business? Has anybody been inflicted with this kind of things? No, no, no. The Bible says what? His situation was that. Yet the Bible says, in all this thing, he did not sin with his lips. One more point. Next time you're going through a difficult situation and you face tragedy, you face loss, you face things that like God and don't blame it on the devil. Maybe God is boasting about you. I don't know whether did that go well. Maybe God is boasting about you before the devil. Man, did you consider this guy? Maybe you're going through a trial moment even right now. And you may be thinking it is the devil, it is the devil. No, no. Can you look at it the other way? Maybe God is boasting about your character. God is boasting about your integrity before him. He said, did you consider my daughter? Did you consider my son? Did you know who, what they are up to? Do you know there is nobody like him? There is no one like her. God is looking for such occasions where he can boast about you. Bless somebody say, God wants to boast about you. Come on, are you with me church? You may be going through a difficult phase in your life and it is hurting you. It's hurting you right from your head to your toe. Every place is hurting and you cannot bear it. Hold a minute. Hold on to your integrity. Retain your integrity. Because that was not the end of Job. Please read the completion of the matter. Go to the last chapter and in your own time. Go to the last chapter. Whatever he lost, God restored it twice. So wait for the completion of the matter. Wait for the completion of the matter. Listen. Don't be in a rush to finish your story about. No, no, no. Wait for the end. Amen. Honestly ask, tell me, please. When you went for a movie or you watch a movie in the house or whether you went to a theater, when the finish, when the, when the movie is gotten over, how many of you still want to wait there till you see the end? You wait till the end, till it is saying, the end, now go. So that's why I say, hold a minute. Don't be run in a rush to finish your story. Wait for the end. And the end is not good. That means it's not good. It's not the end. If the end is not good, that means it's not the end. The movie is not finished. So don't be in a hurry to scream and cry your story. Don't, don't, no, no, no. Hold a minute. That is just part of it. Wait for the chapter where God shows up, where there's a turnaround. And you look at this man, he held on to his integrity, God restored back twice. In Jesus' name. Listen, Jesus, we cannot ignore Jesus when we're talking about integrity. You cannot leave Jesus. He's so big, he's so huge, he's so amazing that we have to make mention about integrity when it comes to Jesus. And this, this Jesus, man Jesus, though son of God, he was God, but God in flesh. The Bible says that even though he being God, he held on to integrity. Go to Matthew chapter 22. The Pharisees 
who are waiting for an occasion. They always live for an occasion where they can catch Jesus in his words. They wanted to lay a trap and they kept 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 on trying, kept on trying, kept on trying, but they were never successful. So again they came together, all the Pharisees, and they they wanted to trap him. So they trapped him. They wanted to trap him as well. Verse number 15. And so then the Pharisees, then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Verse 16. and they sent out unto him their disciples with the herodians saying what were they saying by the way what were they saying by the way he says master we know that you are true and you teach the way of god in truth neither care thou for any man for thou for you do not regard the person of men does anybody have an niv version here What's your NIV version? Sing. I want to hear your voice. I want to see how how well you speak, how loud you speak. Let me see. What did he say? Master, teacher, we know you are a man of what? Integrity. Oh. They want to trap him in words, but before they want to trap him, what was the confession on their mouth? He is a man of truth. He is a man here he says master thou art true that means you are a man of integrity the question is what do people say about you and me when they see us and by the way these were not people who were followers of jesus christ they were enemies they were against the work of god they were against the walk of god they were against it. they want to trap him they were not friends by the way And yet the Bible says even though they came with this thing to trap Jesus the confession started up Jesus we cannot find somebody like you a man of integrity What do the people have to say about us even though they may not be our friends What they have to say when they look at us even though they want to entangle us with something or the other what is their thing when they talk about us as a character is this one not? or do they say like how they said oh we know you are a man of integrity you are a woman of integrity hallelujah see the bible talk see integrity is not just individual or while we talk while we're learning about integrity as an individual honesty truthfulness trustworthiness moral values moral principle all these fine we talk, there's another part another part to integrity is also called for corporate too. city or a state that means when we talk about as a state when we talk about as a church when we talk out a talk about as a city each one is very well integrated come on guys another word for that integrity is called unity where there is coalition where there is what understanding togetherness And when I talk about that kind of integrity as a church they integrated very well woven together when the church is found to be having or holding integrity that means everybody is united then it reminds me of Psalms 133 he says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity in together in what integrity for there the lord commands a bless for there god releases the anointing you want the church to flow in the anointing you want the church to flow in power you want the church to manifest in the power of god then the church needs to be integrated very well in the place of unity god speaks a blessing hallelujah Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To God be the glory. Quick one. I have seven minutes and I want you to quickly track, track, track with me. Quickly. I want to take the word. Speak very quick with me. Okay. Go to Psalms. Uh, Psalms. 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 25 verse 21. Psalms 25 verse 21. Look at the benefits of holding on to integrity. Psalms 25 verse 21. See what he says let integrity and uprightness preserve me for i wait on you He says let integrity and uprightness preserve me In other words integrity protects you 
go to proverbs chapter 10 verse 9 proverbs chapter 10 verse 9 see what he says he that walketh uprightly walketh surely but he that perverts in his ways shall be known what does your version say the first part aha uh-huh. he who walks with integrity his walk will be secured that means integrity gives us confidence secure wherever there is security when it is secured you're confident you will not slip you walk straight go to the next chapter chapter 11 look at verse number 3 The integrity of the upright shall guide them. Oh, that's beautiful. When you and I walk with integrity, you will never lack direction. See what the word of God says. When you the upright walks with integrity, he says what? The the integrity of the upright shall guide them. That means you will always be in a position to take better decisions. You will never be confused about a decision should I do this under no no because when you hold on to the integrity of your heart before God and before man the bible says what it will guide you to take better decisions it will guide you in your life and the best one i like go to psalms 40 41 verse 11 41 i love this 41 verse 11 41 was 11 What does it say He says by this I know that you favor me because my enemy does not triumph over me What a wonderful word that is By this I know that I have the favor of God resting on my life the enemy is not having triumph or victory over my life Go to the next verse He says what And as for me Thou holds me in my integrity and set me and you sets me before thy face for what once in a while no forever simple he says as for me you're holding me you seeing me stand before you in my integrity and he says what god it is you who sets me before your face in other words integrity will make you to live before the presence of god You want to walk in integrity? You want to No, let me put it the other way. You want to walk where you enjoy the presence of God, walk in integrity. See, he says what? You hold my integrity before yourself. You hold my integrity and you set me. God set me. God, you set me before your face. And I checked it in the Bible. You stand before the face of God. His countenance will shine upon you. When you stand before the presence of God your countenance begins to glow. Hallelujah. Take a time and go home and read 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 16. Go home and read this. He talks about good conscience. Listen, integrity is a matter of conscience, right? It's a conscience. It's a conscience issue. You know where integrity is that's a place of confidence when i said in not only confidence integrity when you hold on to it it's a place of being at peace within yourself let me explain listen when there is some issue happening when there is some when you are up to some play or mischief inside when a person is dilly dallying when the person is little crooked here and there that person will constantly live in fear i wish my boss would not catch me i wish my wife does not catch me always fear happening when he's putting his head to rest the head maybe the physically is sleeping but the mind is awake why it is condemning you why it's an integrity issue here but when you walk in integrity the bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion So when you walk in integrity it does not matter who is in front of you you will walk with boldness and confidence why why are you enjoying peace 
So the, if next time you feel at you, you're, you're restless, you're panicking or you're worrying or you are tense or your heart is pounding, you are like, don't know, you're walking with uncertainty, you're walking in fear and you're like, I don't know what is happening. It, it, don't blame it on the devil. Probably God has wanted to tap you and say, hey, I think it's an integrity issue here. It's an integrity issue. Shall we arise and pray? Shall we arise and pray? God is looking for, listen, please, if you can, be here next Friday again. And I'm here next Friday. The story, the thing about the, the, the thing about integrity is not over. Because I'm going to give the other side of integrity. I want to urge you, please be present next Friday. But for now, at this point in time, I want you to take time and pray. 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 It's a, it's a time to do a reality check. God, how is my integrity before men? What people talk about me, when they look at me, whether it's my colleague, my peers, whether it's my friend circle, whether it's my family, whether it's in the marketplace, what my children talk about me. Ones who are not friends of mine, who are against me, what do they talk about me? Oh, like the, the Bible says, they spoke about Jesus. They said, Master, we know that you are a man of truth. You are a man of integrity. Pray and ask God for grace. Remember again, this is the moment to remember who has been good to you. If your wife has been good to you, say thank you Lord for my wife. Pray, I will hold on to my integrity before my wife. If your husband has been good to you, if your husband has been, say God, all the days of my life, I will be good to this man. I will be, Lord, hold on to my integrity before this man. Pray. If your mom has been good to you, the, tirelessly, she will be serving you. She will put food on the table. No matter what, she's doing the household chores. No matter what, she's there to serve you. No matter what, your dad is there. You may be going to difficult time. Church, children in the house, pray. Say, God, my dad has been good to me. My mom has been good to me. My mom, my dad did not abandon me on the street. Pray in front of my dad, in front of my mom. I will hold on to my integrity. I will stay honest with my parents. Pray the same prayer if you want to pray concerning your jobs where you are. If your company has been good to you, say, Lord, I bless my, my, my employer. I bless the company that I work for. I bless the organization that I work for. I bless the manager who's, uh, who, to whom I report to. I bless the, uh, the, the, the supervisor under whom I work. Pray, God, this man has been good to me. Bless him. Bless him and say, God, I will hold on. Whether my boss is on leave or not on leave, I will show up and I will be faithful. I will be faithful holding on to my integrity. Pray God give me grace. I will hold on to my integrity before you. Pray and ask God for grace. That Listen, this is the moment like pray God. I want you to boast about me. I want to give you that occasion in my life that you boast about me like you boasted about Job. And you kept boasting another time. He's still holding on. He's still holding on. His wife also said, you're still retaining onto your integrity. Pray. I believe God is about to boast about someone here. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's me. God is about to boast about you. God is about to boast about you. Listen, he said there is nobody like him on the face of the earth. Nobody like him on the face of the earth. It's not an ordinary statement. It is a statement where he's talking about, have you seen him? Like Job before God was like a global figure. On the face of the earth, there is nobody like him. There are other people living on the planet of the earth. But the Bible says, God looked at him and said, have you considered that guy? Pray, God, I want you to boast about me. That grace would rest upon my life. Lord, that's a kind of integrity. That's a kind of worship that I want to bring unto you, God. An integrity called worship, uh, a worship called integrity, oh God. Pray, ask God for grace. Pray. Pray. Because that's what integrity does. It puts you in the presence of God. Integrity would make you to sleep very well and be at peace. 
you may be going through difficult time you would still be very peaceful because you're holding on to integrity pray in all these things in whatever way in whatever walks of life that you are in right now or whatever mode of life that you're in whatever juncture uh, a juncture a juncture that you're in life right in life right now pray you will not cause your lips to sin against god love you god come sam come come pray pray i'll see color about go ahead lead the people we are still praying church we are still praying Hold on to the integrity. Hold on to the integrity that God is looking for. Pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. Church, pray that integrity is not just hearing the word or just meditate upon the integrity. Integrity is in action. Integrity is goes with action. The Bible said, be the doers of the word, not just hear us and deceive yourself. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor, oh Father God. Lord, we pray, Father God. Lord, raise up a faithful generation from this ministry, Father God. In the name of Jesus, man of integrity, women of integrity, my Father God. Not in the presence of believers, Lord, even in the private life, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor, oh Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.